What is up heroes, it's Midnight Zero and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton in the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode we did some more exploration, we had quite a few math puzzles. Uh, we spent some time in the sewer and we had just entered the park. We took a look at a few of the attractions, as I'm sure um, the, the summary may tell you. And we were just about to make our way to the Ferris wheel. There's actually one thing along the way though, um, I believe if we go ahead this way, we'll find it on our right. And it seems it's caught the attention of uh, the Professor himself and Luke as well. So let's see what they have to say about it. Look, Professor, there's a strange little shed over there. Interesting. It seems this shed routes water to the sewer pipes. I feel this warrants a closer look. I agree. Hmm. It doesn't appear that the door will open. Let's move on and explore the rest of the park, Luke. Interesting. I get the impression that we're going to need a some way to get through that lock because there's no I doubt highly doubt that it's just you know by chance is there really no no puzzle it says don't throw trash in the lake it's a good idea yeah really really no puzzles there okay I guess for now <laughs> um, let's see here this must be the ferris wheel we we're looking for Look, why don't you look around and see if anything seems odd about it? Sure thing, Professor. Hmm. Find something? Did you find anything out of the ordinary, Luke? Oh, we don't even have the chance to investigate. No, not a thing. Maybe there's no secret hidden in this Ferris wheel after all. That remains to be seen. Let's look around a bit more, shall we? So in the end, that ticket we picked up turned out to be meaningless? So it seems. I suppose my intuition failed us this time, Luke. Come, let's head back to the heart of St. Mysterio and search for our next lead. Really? I was gonna say, giving up that easily? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, is it gonna fall on you? Move! Get out of the way! Huh? Professor! Get away, Luke! Run! Oh, your eyes. <laughs> this is what that evil person meant by it'll be your last, or whatever. <laughs> Split up! Widen! Oh my goodness! Run, Luke! Run, Layton! I believe in you! Wow! Wow! <sighs> Last. Wow. I certainly did not expect such a dramatic adrenaline-pumping cutscene in a game like Professor Layton, but they had me there. And would you look at Professor Layton? Uh, you know, the, the courage to, I guess, dive out of the way and cover Luke, protect him. As smart and kind as he is, he's also quite strong and noble. Um, not surprised, I guess, but uh, it's very cool. Very cool. Um, and now we have this Ferris wheel to wreck, and we obviously saw the villain who was remote controlling it. Don't know how he could see where it was going and where Layton and all them were. Maybe a camera on the Ferris wheel or something, but nevertheless, our, uh, our heroes are alive. <laughs> Why would the Ferris wheel... Professor, look what happened to the shed. Well, I guess that takes care of the lock, right? <laughs> The Ferris wheel must have simply destroyed it. If we'd made a wrong step back there, we'd be rubble too. Oh my. Hmm. What's crossed your mind? I think I found something here, Professor. What could that be? Now, what's an entrance to the sewers doing here? This could well be an underground passage to the tower. We've got to take a look below. Come. I'm right behind you, Professor. Ooh, exciting. Alright. Um, down we go. Or first, hint coin. I don't know if you noticed that, but the place that I had clicked prior to Robopup showing up, um, well, well, I obviously couldn't actually click because Robopup, or Robopup was on the screen, but I tried clicking somewhere, and then the first time I clicked somewhere after Robopup disappeared, it clicked where I had previously clicked. It's kind of weird, huh? Anyways, I hope I don't trip. This place is pitch black. Brr, and it's cold, too. Watch your step, Luke. 
Look for anything suspicious or out of place. Alright, plenty of investigation. Um, nothing in this bucket? No? Okay. Um, how about this here? What is that? A map of some sort? A window? Or a grid? Look, there's a sort of stone tablet embedded in the wall. This is clearly some kind of puzzle. I'd wager the solution will tell us the direction in which to proceed. Ooh, this is exciting. Number 89, which way? Didn't we already have a puzzle named that? Hmm. The path you are on forks to the left and right in front of the sign seen below. Or forks to the left and right in front of the sign seen below. Your gut feeling tells you that this sign reveals the direction you need to go, either left or right. Find an arrow within the picture, like the yellow one on the side of the board, okay? When you find it, draw a line around it as neatly as possible. Okay. Keep in mind that the arrow you are searching for may not be the same size as the one pictured below. Gotcha. And so we're looking one of the same shape as this guy over here. And again, it could be... Um, smaller. So, naturally we're going to want to start looking for, for triangles. Um, and we are looking for either an arrow to the left or an arrow to the right. Well, this is somewhat complex, is it not? <laughs> um, part of what makes it difficult is the lack of, of symmetry in some areas, but... Hmm. It's supposed to be that shape. I guess like at first glance I could see something like this. Something like that. Like... I don't know, that's not the best shape. But that's roughly an arrow, right? That's like, that's roughly an arrow. Although I guess you could theoretically say the same thing about the other side, right? This arrow is arguably neater. <laughs> I like this one a lot more. You could, it would definitely be disproportionate, also say that this is an arrow of that shape. But I'm gonna guess that the one they want us to point out is this one here. And that would be pretty clearly telling us to go to the left. Yeah, let's uh, let's give it a go. That looks pretty convincing to me. That should do it. Maybe it's not what they wanted me to see, but it's not, I guess. Okay. Frankly, I'm ashamed. Um, don't forget to trace the figure neatly. I mean, I, I thought I tried. <laughs> I mean, you guys can see what I'm looking at, right? And what I drew. I think that's a pretty compelling arrow. But I guess... I guess not. Did I not draw it well enough? Was it not... I guess a good enough shape? It's technically off-center, right? This, like, stem part there is technically off-center. So maybe maybe that's not what they want. Maybe it truly has to be a symmetrical, like, even arrow. Hmm. The thing is... None of it, that means the intersection that forms the triangular part of the arrow needs to be at the center of one of these rectangular sections here. So what we should do is look for rectangles that will have intersections like this one here, um, like this one here, that are in the center of different rows or blocks. I'm not seeing very many. I think this is pretty compelling in terms of what an arrow would look like. I mean, maybe I didn't trace well enough? I don't know. I wish they maybe indicated some 
Or, I wish they were pretty lenient, but I don't know. It's either left or right, right? I mean, they don't actually say that. It says that the path forks left or right, and you would assume that this is going to tell you whether or not to go left or, or right. Um, though it technically doesn't mean that by finding an arrow going up or something like that, we'll, we'll find a new passage, or down for that matter. Hmm. Because, like, I guess theoretically there's also this arrow ish <laughs> um, it's tough to say with confidence right I don't know but it's got to look like that arrow it's not necessarily the same size which somewhat goes without saying I guess what I'm looking for is these sort of rectangular segments that then lead into triangular segments like that. Oops, whoa, that was, uh, that was not what I wanted to click. <laughs> um, without obviously overdoing it. Is it this? This arrow here? Like, is that it? <laughs> it's small, but do you guys see it? Let me see if I can outline it a little bit better. Something like this, and then down, and then to this point, and then this way, and then back up. That is roughly that shape. Not quite the same dimensions, I would say. But is that what they want me to see? <laughs> I mean like there's that's technically an arrow shape right but then they're also like huge arrows right like this is technically an arrow that was really really poorly traced up there something like that right like that's also an arrow <laughs> and it's of a similar shape however I would say it doesn't have the, the base, kind of like at the, the tail end of the arrow, um, and that may be its downfall, whereas the others that I've drawn do. Because yeah, no matter what, it's going to need a, a base of some sort. Some vertically oriented line to form a base. Is it this? This looks the most compelling, actually. I actually like that best. I feel like that's the closest in shape. And again, you'll notice this intersection here that I actually literally highlighted earlier, that's really funny, um, is pretty close to the center of these rectangular spaces, or pretty close to the midpoint of the vertical segment of the rectangle, not the, not the center. <laughs> um, so this is pretty close to symmetrical. Now, let's see if I can trace this pretty well. Go down like that, that, and then what's also kind of notable is that the, um, the kind of wings on the right side of the, the top and bottom of the triangular segment, they seem uh, about the same in size, in contrary to the first arrow we submitted. There so we'll we give go. this a go. That's what they wanted me to see. Every All right. Has an answer. Okay, we made it. Well done. Now you can move forward. <laughs> Lovely. There's our answer. We will proceed down the left corridor. Understood, Professor. We got an artisan's teapot. We'll give it to Layton. All right. Anything else? Um, nothing else of interest? 
Not in the rubble, not on the floor, not in the basket, not in the stones, no hidden puzzles, nothing? Alright. We'll continue to search. Oh, we got quite the ominous door at the end there. Finding plenty of coins in the walls. Alright, well, well, we'll check out what's at the end of the hallway. There's not really much left uh, to do. Look, Professor, there's a strange device on the door here. Hmm, it seems to be a puzzle of some sort. I imagine the door won't open until we solve it. <laughs> of course. It's almost like we're being tested, isn't it? Yeah, that's the impression I'm getting. Puzzle number 90. Get the ball out number 2. 50 pick rats. Oh boy. Uh, can you get the red ball out of the maze? Slide obstructing blocks out of the way to clear a path for the ball. The problem can be solved in as few as 14 moves. Okay. So naturally... Um, what stands out about this is the symmetry, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to probably have to rotate blocks in some manner, but it's not going to be as simple as just moving everything around the yellow block in the middle. When looking at our first moves, right, we have the option of moving only these blue bricks. And the question is, what can we do with that? Um... Honestly, not a whole lot if we do the bottom blue brick, right? All we can do is then move that purple brick, which doesn't do anything. So I think our first move has to be moving this. Although that similarly doesn't actually accomplish much. Does it? <laughs> um, does it? Although I want to see, can I move this over the hole? I can! Oh, so that's actually, that's very important. Um, so we'll definitely want to start with that then. Because we can move that out of the way. Now we have a couple different options. I can move the blue block to the left so that I can shift the right purple and green blocks down. And then slide those to the right. That's pretty tempting. However, I could also move the entirety of the yellow block down. And that is also pretty tempting. I'm tempted to try that first. And instead do something like this. Although I don't think that was particularly helpful. Oh no, my headphones need to be recharged. Um, I don't think you guys can actually hear my, my headphones telling me to recharge them. But that may be an issue. <laughs> um... Let's think about this for another moment. Yeah, this actually didn't free up as much as I would have liked. So let's let's go this way. If I were to do that and then can push that there, I can move this all the way there. And again, I can move or actually I can move this all the way down here, then this all the way across, <clears throat> all the way across. You gotta move with me. Um, okay, like that. And then I can move this down there to move this all the way over there. Now what? Now I can move this here. So I can move the ball there, slide this up. Then what? No! <laughs> um, I can do this and this to move this over here, but I don't think I'm actually accomplishing a lot. No, move... Ugh, I have to use two moves for that now. Um, I can move the ball down again. Does that really allow me to do much, though? I guess I could then move this over here and up and out of the way, so that I can move that there and then this all the way up. Keep going. <laughs> Um, and then I can move that there and this that way and go down like that. Luke, so we made it there. My um, I think there were quite a, there were a few times where my my mouse every puzzle has an answer. I guess like stopped my movement before I was done making the move. So added on a few there. I I'd be curious to figure out what the 15 minimum move solution is. I don't think we were too far off though. So I'm still pretty happy with that. And now I need to figure out something to do about my headset. Okay, so, <laughs> headset is recharging as we're playing. This is not exactly the most com comfortable of positions, but it takes quite a while for my headset to recharge, so 
It's not like I can really pause now and come back to it. So, so we persevere. Um, that should do the trick. We found ourselves another painting scrap. Ooh, I'm excited. That means we have one more scrap to go. And what are we going to find inside? Are we in the tower? What? Oh no, it just opened. We haven't even been shown what's inside. Really quickly. We got a couple new stuff um, in our inventory we can work with. Uh, notably, what was Leighton given again? Leighton was given... I think it was the teapot? Now, what British gentleman could do without a teapot? <laughs> if I like tea, I bet this would be great to have. Okay, so definitely not for him. Man, their, their happiness levels don't look all that great, despite having so many items. Alright, I guess. Um, and I guess we'll add the one painting scrap we do have, so that it's as epic as it may seem once we finally do add the, uh, the final piece. Yep, there we go. There's only one piece left. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Okay, and now uh, with that being said... It's still telling me to recharge? It should be plugged in! Yeah, it's, it's, it's plugged in, it's just still low, so it's... You guys obviously can't hear it, um, or not obviously. I figured this out in a different Let's Play before, that you guys can't. But every, like, few minutes it just goes, Recharge headset. Anyways. Wow, I certainly didn't expect a room down here. Let's give it a thorough once-over. Something isn't right about this place. I can feel it in my bones. Yeah, it's like a secret hideout. Is this where our villain has been? It's just a milk jug. That's an ordinary tub. There's some tiny paintings here. Are all of them normal? Ouch, hot, hot. <laughs> What's that? Nothing to see here. How about up there? Just an empty box. Aha! Uh -huh. I, I usually like to start from the things I think are unimportant and make my way to uh, the important stuff. Something's hidden behind here. Alright, let's move the picture out of the way then. What's this here? Huh. That looks like a key to the tower, maybe? It appears to be some sort of key. But what does it unlock? We won't know until we investigate further, but this shape certainly looks familiar. Yeah, it reminds me of the tower. Professor, could this be? Yeah, it looks just like the tower. That's a pretty cool looking key. I knew there was something odd about that dead end. Perhaps this key will shed some light on things. Luke, we need to head back to that large wall on the north side of St. Mysterio. I have a hunch that it's more than a dead end. You and me both. Great. Don't automatically take us there. Oh, we're going to be automatically taken there. Either way, chapter 7 has been solved. Was that really the only thing to find in that room? I'd be surprised if there wasn't more. Okay. What else is there? Nothing to see here. All the drawers are completely empty. The curious vase. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Is there really that little to see in such a room? I guess so. Well, I guess we finished up chapter 7. And we're now on our way out. You can see who we run into. And head over this way. That's where the Ferris wheel was, but let's see if there's anything there now. That poor Ferris wheel, wheel is totally destroyed now. That reminds me, Luke. Have you heard the wonderful puzzle about the Ferris wheel? We have not. I'm all ears, though. Ferris wheel riddle. Clever. <laughs> there are ten two-seater cars attached to the Ferris Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel turns so that one car rotates through the exit platform every minute. The wheel began operation at 10 in the morning and shut down 30 minutes later. What's the maximum number of people that could have taken a ride on the wheel in that time period? Okay, so the wheel begins operation at 10 in the morning and shuts down 30 minutes later. I think part of what they are going to try to catch you on is that you're going to say, okay, so there are 20 people on it in the morning and they continue through, um, you know, every minute they replace another two. And so you'd add on the extra two people for the each of the 30 minutes and you get you know 80 however the ferris wheel is empty at the beginning right so if the wheel begins operation at 10 they must first load two people on so for the first 20 minutes they're just adding the first 20 people on right so realistically it's only 
30 cars, or not first 20 people, first 20 pairs, or the first 20 cars, right? Because it's so that one car rotates through the exit platform every minute. So yeah, the first 20 minutes are going to be loading on, not 20, there are 10 cars. <laughs> wow. I gotta get this straight. 10 cars for 20 people. Let's think in terms of cars. So the first 10 minutes are just going to be adding people on. And then after the 10 minute mark, they're finally going to start exiting, right? So... So really, I mean, it's, it's just 30 cars, isn't it? You add on 10, you add on one car per minute, really. Which is two people per minute, so it should be 60. I guess one thing you have to consider is what does taking a ride on the wheel mean? Does that mean board the wheel or completely go from start to finish? Because if it's the latter, then we have a little bit more calculation to do. Hmm. I think it's going to be the latter. I think it's going to be have taken a ride on the wheel means to have exited. So, at the 10 minute mark, that's when your first two people will, uh, will be exiting. Right? Starts at 10 a.m. One minute, they go around. Is this drawn appropriately? It is. Can I draw? It is. Okay, lovely. So let's say somebody hops on here. One minute goes by, they go this way. Two minutes. Three minutes. Four minutes. Five minutes. Six minutes. Seven minutes. Eight minutes. Nine minutes. Ten minutes, they get off. Okay. So, the first people have fully taken a ride at the 10 minute mark. And then for the next 20 minutes... Well, 20 cars will have been offloaded. So, it'll be 21 cars in total, I guess? Right? It'll be 21 cars in total that have gone through And that would make 42 people that successfully took a ride on the wheel. An entire ride, that is. Yeah, I think so. Because, I mean, at the 10 minute mark, you're getting your first person to have completed a ride, and then you have 10 more minutes, where each minute you're offloading people, and then you have another 10 more minutes. So, in reality, there are 21 minutes where people are actually finishing their ride, rather than simply boarding. And if that's the case, there are 21 cars and 42 people. I think that's what they want. I'm gonna go with that. This may seem a little bit rushed, and it it may be. I think it might depend on what they consider taking a ride. I would imagine taking a ride would mean to board the Ferris wheel and then completely ride around it, and then exit the Ferris wheel. Yeah, let's um let's go with that then. All right, we got it. Nice. I'm I'm actually really yes. happy with that one. That was that was pretty clever. That's right. For the first 9 minutes the Ferris wheel is moving. The cars arriving at the unloading zone are unoccupied for the last 9 minutes of operation, needless to say. Um no one will be allowed on the cars. Okay. Excellent job, my boy. And we got the final painting scrap. That's it. That's the final scrap we need to complete the painting. Oh, I'm so excited. What happens when we complete the painting? Is it going to unlock another latent challenge? I wonder where it goes. Lovely. This painting is truly brilliant. It simply must go on my wall. By the way, Luke, I have a present for you to mark this occasion. 
Turn off your Nintendo DS once, then restart the game. At the title screen, select bonuses, and you should have a new challenge from me. Now I know you're excited about your present, but be sure to save before you restart your DS. Layton's Challenges, the Art Lover's House has been added to your map. Lovely. So we have a new challenge. Wow. That's, that's pretty crazy. I'm excited. I really want to try those Layton's Challenges. It'll, pro it'll probably be after the game, though, of course. Okay. Um... I hope... I'm still self-conscious about the whole recharge headset. Um, is there anything else we can do to take advantage of the, um... Of the rubble, or... Are there really no other puzzles here? Oh! Is this possibly a puzzle? Do we find one hidden? Look, Professor, there's a hidden puzzle here! Lovely. I'm glad we found it. Odd box out. Okay. Of the four boxes below, three are the exact same box viewed from different angles. The fourth box has a slightly different design. Can you spot the odd box out? Alright, so the first thing I want to do is compare the different designs. So that it's not just kind of like an easy, um, oh, like, they're the same cube and they have the same orientation, but the design is actually different, where one is like a square, where one, whereas one would be a diamond or something like that. Um, and so just looking briefly at the What's it called? The green star, for example, looks the same on both. The heart with the three dots around it looks the same. The the gray and white, I guess like cross with dots, looks the same. The the sun also looks the same. And then the the diamonds on the red side look the same. And then the square on the purple side looks the same. So it's not something silly like that. It is truly about the orientation of the blocks. So let's see here. If we were to imagine that A and B are the exact same cube, just viewed differently. We can't actually confirm that yet, um, because both sides that are shown in B are invisible on A. However, we're reconstructing, we're basically, we're building this cube in our head. So, what would be on the other side? Um, it would need to be... So, like, let's look at B real quick. If we look at B, it has the blue side on top, and it has the gray on the left, and then the, the white on the right. If we were to continue looking around it on the left side, if we peeked around the left side, our first face would need to be purple, and then the other one, the right hidden face, would be green. Okay, so now let's think about that orientation for C. So with C, the left side... So the heart is on top, right? Um, it actually is congruent. So the the heart, if it were on top, the left, the one to the left of it, the left hidden face would be the gray, and the right hidden face would be the blue, um, and then the right would be the uh, what's to the right of the heart is the green side, which is what we said from before, and that appears to be the case here. And then the one hidden side, I guess, um, would be the, the red diamond side, which we obviously could not see before because it's hidden in, um, in both of those, right? Yes. The left hidden face in the A block would have to be the red diamond, and the face that's, I guess, like on the ground um, would have to be the the heart, and then the right hidden face would have to be the gray side. So let's look at D and see the relationship between those sides. I think D is the odd one out, just um, at first glance. Just looking at the relation between the, the gray side and the red diamond, that seems to be the problem. because. When you look at B, the red side has to be the side that's touching the ground, that's on the ground right now. If it's congruent with C, that is, and A. If it's not the odd one out. And if that's the case, that would mean that if you were to kind of roll it such that the the red side is no longer on the ground, but instead facing on the right, um, on the right visible side, 
basically if we were to take this top right cube, the B cube, and move it like this, um, you would get what you have in D. Except, this purple face would actually be the white heart face. So I don't think, so I think that's the, the problem. I think that is the problem here. And I mean... Yeah, I mean, A, B, and, and C seemed very consistent. And I think D is inconsistent then. I'm tempted to just give it a go. Because <laughs> it takes a while to kind of run through the mental gymnastics in your head. Because you have to, you have to draw, I guess, conclusions between multiple cubes. You can't just say, oh, look at C and D, is one wrong, right? Because there are always two hidden faces. So you need to put two of the cubes together and then compare the third one to that. But it seems to me like A, B, and C are congruent, and D didn't line up. I could theoretically construct a cube then, right, with something like C and D, and then maybe A or B wouldn't seem congruent though. That's, that's what has me concerned. For example, if I said C and D, um, what if the two hidden faces in C, on the left and then on the ground, the two remaining adjoined sides to the red side are in fact purple and gray. Then what, right? It would mean that in the C diagram, this side here would have to be purple, and then the ground side would have to be gray. But if that were the case, the gray and the circle, or the gray and the heart could not be adjoined at any point. So it wouldn't mesh with B. Would it mesh with A is the question as well. So again, reminding ourselves that in order for that to be the case, this side would have to be purple and the ground side would have to be gray. Meaning this last side on the right would have to be the, the blue. Meaning it would go blue and then purple. Although purple, if it's here, could not be adjoined to the star. Right? Like it is in A. So because this has a problem with both A and B, it means C or D has to be one of the problems. So yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with D here. I'm gonna go with D. How does this sound? I don't want to rush it, but I also don't want to. You know, I want I want to do the puzzle justice, um, and I want to really fully exercise my brain. But I also don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> this is a pretty tough one. Good thinking. If you break down boxes A, B, and C, you can see that they all share the same arrangement of decorations. That's a much better way to go about it. That would have been much better if you could draw it out like that. Woof! That. That puzzle sure put up a fight. Yes, it did. Well, I'm glad that we found it, at least. Um, it was pretty well tucked in there. Anything else? Um, I guess we'll head back one more. We have the map and all that. Um, anything in the garbage can, the bench, under a rock, anything in the tree. I guess a hint coin, but otherwise, I guess not. So it looks like next up we're, we're heading to that wall. Can I do anything with the sign? No? Any new rubble? Hmm, let's go investigate that dead end right away. Alright Luke, but first let's make a quick stop by the inn. There's something I need to check on there. Why the inn, Professor? It seems that someone doesn't want us around, Luke. Someone is, in fact, after us. And the key to identifying the scoundrel is back at the inn. So you already have an idea about who's behind this? <laughs> Piqued your interest, have I? Ooh, look at Layton. Always ahead of the game. 
Chapter 8, The Shadowy Intruder. Someone's been obstructing the investigation. Find the troublemaker and continue work on the case. Ooh, this is exciting. This is so exciting. And Layton's already onto it. Love it. Love it. All right, so we've officially started Chapter 8, and now we need to go back to the inn to find out some of the more clues, or some more clues just about who is trying to get in our way, and then furthermore, let's head to the tower so we can figure out what's going on up there. So many mysteries to solve, so many enemies, not so many, but an enemy to, to identify and then defeat. I'm pretty excited, but as you may suspect, we're going to continue doing so in the next episode. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm absolutely having a blast. The puzzles are really cool. Um, I'm glad that some of the stuff is coming together, some of the collectibles, etc. And it's crazy to think we've already solved 104 puzzles. Um, it, yeah, it's just, it's a lot, but I'm, I'm liking them. So, anyways, until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.